On Larry King Now, the Big Bang Theory stars Maya Bialik and Melissa Rauch. And it's a show about the rest of us, you know. Uh, the shows I watched as a kid were lots of attractive people hooking up in different permutations, and our show is not that. Our show is about the other people who don't fit in. I spent years waiting tables and standing on the street corner handing out flyers to have people come to see stand-up comedy. Really, there's not a tape night that we have that I don't go back to my dressing room and have to get a retouch on my makeup, because I'm so grateful. I'm very awkward when I get recognized and make it awkward for everyone in my surrounding environment. I still go to the supermarket and I still go places with my kids in a baseball hat and for, for Jim and for, for Kaylee especially, that's very hard to do. Plus, most embarrassing moment on the set. We had an episode where Sheldon was supposed to spank Amy off camera. It was supposed to be audio only and in front of the audience, Chuck Lorre decided he would like that to be done on camera. And Jim and I had not at all rehearsed people seeing him spanking me. It was what was very, it like? It was embarrassing. <laughs> all next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our special guests today are Mayim Bialik and Melissa Rauch. They're stars of the smash CBS sitcom and the number one comedy on television, The Big Bang Theory. Mayim's character, Amy Farrar Fowler, is a neuroscientist and the love interest of physicist Sheldon Cooper, infamously played by the Emmy Award winning Jim Parsons, while Melissa plays Bernadette Rostenkowski Wolowitz. <laughs> Who came up with that? A former waitress turned microbiologist. The Big Bang Theory season seven finale airs Thursday, May 15th at 8 p.m. Eastern time on CBS. By him, why is this such a hit? <laughs> I don't know. Well, because I have a degree, I'm supposed to know these things. What do you guess? Um, uh, I guess it's our writing. Um, I think people want to watch characters that they care about and that they're interested in. Um, I think the relationships on our show um, do more than just make people laugh. I think they make people think and feel connected in a certain way. And it's a show about the rest of us, you know. Uh, the shows I watched as a kid were lots of attractive people hooking up in different permutations. And our show is not that. Our show is about the other people who don't fit into sort You're of that normal. she's not attractive? <laughs> she's very She's normal. always <laughs> saying that. It's, it's a constant battle with her. She really just tears me down to build herself think, up all the time. Why do you think it's a hit? Um, I mean, all the reasons that she just said, 100%. We have an amazing team of writers and a great cast. And I, I really do believe, I mean, everyone can relate to being an underdog at some point in their lives. And that's what this show When you saw the script initially and got the parts, did you think this was going to go places? Well, Melissa and I, Melissa was brought on a bit before me in the mm -hmm. third season. I only appeared in the season finale of season three. Oh, so um, it was a hit already. I, mm -hmm. I had never seen it. It was actually kind of a fan favorite, but we didn't really kind of see critical acclaim, honestly, N not because Melissa and I were added, but after, after season four and into five was when our show started getting nominated. And I think that's when, um, I don't know, that's when we sort of became more than just a, a, big, a big deal with fans and more sort of people were saying, oh, this is actually a smart show. These writers are, are really interesting. Melissa, in a recent interview, the showrunner Stephen Malaro warned that season seven will end, which we'll see next week, mm -hmm. with a cliffhanger that has nothing to do with the fate of the core cast. What did he mean? Hmm. <laughs> That's interesting. I'm not sure. I think just um, that this is the journey that these characters are on at this moment, and it's not necessarily where they'll end up in the, the long run. Right, last right. season we ended with Leonard going away. There, it's true, it's a very different kind of uh, finale. Will we be shocked? Shocked. Mm. Surprised? I think a little bit surprised, yeah. Maybe confused. You'll, you maybe might have some confused. confusing feelings. You will be enjoying yourself, though. <laughs> that I can say well, for sure. Well, we could do a lot of things. <laughs> <doing that. laughs> uh, will, Leonard, will Leonard and Penny tie the knot? That, it looks like they are on that path. Um, is that the season finale? Is it the season finale? I'm is it the season finale? I'm you. asking you, go there. <laughs> that, no. Right. My, you're dating Sheldon, is, are you gonna marry him? Uh, I don't know if Amy and Sheldon are gonna get married. You know, we just had our first kiss, really, this year, and that took three years. So I think based on that trajectory, we've probably got a, another three years till we can... How about something more than a kiss? 
Um, Whatever, I, I don't, as they say, consummate. Yeah, um, yeah I, I don't know. I mean, we virtually consummated our relationship. I guess it was last season yeah. in the episode directed by Anthony Rich. Uh, we had a Dungeons & Dragons episode where Amy and Sheldon virtually consummated their relationship, which was very cute. But no, I think we're a ways off from that, and I think sort of some of the interest in this relationship is in that sort of um, unusualness. When are you and Howard going to have a baby? Oh, um, I don't know. I don't know if it's in the cards anytime soon, based on Bernadette's voice and Howard's mother's voice. I think that the how vocal cords ahead, on that baby would be terrifying. How far ahead do you know where it's going? When do you um, see you see a scripts weekly? How do you? How does just, it work? We do our table read Wednesday morning, and we get, get the scripts Tuesday night. The night and before. That's all you know that's is the next episode. Mm -hmm. I don't want to know anything. <laughs> do they allow you input into the scripts? Not at all. No. I, you can't I mean, change a word. Well, so if you can you can go to bat if you say, oh, this word's so awkward, or you know, this is something my character just feels weird. But for the most part, the writers know us better than we know exactly. ourselves. They're the genius architects behind it. All right, there is some controversy. The Chinese government has banned The Big Bang Theory as well as several other popular American shows from streaming online. The only way fans in China can view these shows up until April when The Big Bang Theory was pulled was it's been viewed 1.4 billion times online. What do you make of all this? Oh. I mean, I think we're both aware of it, but we both heard about it. I don't know if either of us really have any in, enough information to comment on it. We just know that we just produce the best show we can every week. <laughs> well, Time speculated that China's move stemmed from the belief that your cast was too wild and crazy for the impressionable Chinese youth. I suppose that's possible. <laughs> I think that's all we're going to say about it. Do you understand why China did this? I, I really don't know enough about it. China bans all sorts of things. Well, you're surprised. We're in good company. With, I, <laughs> I guess it's NCIS. Historic, and historically, it's... we're in very good company. <laughs> so you're not surprised? No. The show's renewed three more years. Are you renewed three more years? Yes, we are. You are. So we know that you will... <laughs> <laughs> if nothing else, it's the two of us. <laughs> we know you will be there till the end. Right? So Not well, yeah, we don't know that that's the end. Uh, our, no. show has a, our show has a three-year pickup, but yeah. In a business that's insecure, you have that valuable item called security. I think in a lot of, um, a lot of um, jobs in, in our country, it's good to have job security, mm -hmm. right? Hollywood especially, but yeah, um, that is job security for sure. What has this done to your life? Um, well, like you said, the the fact that I know I have a job to come back to after this summer is such a dream come true. I spent years waiting tables and... Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and standing on the street corner handing out flyers to have people come to see stand-up comedy. And um, so this was definitely... It's a dream come true. And I was a fan of the show before I joined the cast. And it really... There's not a tape night that we have that I don't go back to my dressing room and have to get a retouch on my makeup because I'm so <laughs> grateful. Up next, what's life on the set of The Big Bang Theory like? We'll also learn from the show's stars, Maya and Melissa. We'll learn all about that and a lot of other things after the break. What's it like, ladies, to come into a show that's uh, already been I, on I, for two years? I've likened it to coming into high school about two weeks into your last year when everyone else has picked out their lockers and who they want to sit with at lunch. Uh, it takes some time, but um, everybody's been very welcoming and we've formed little relationships kind of with each person in different ways, so. What was it like for you? Um, I mean, like I said, I was a fan of the show before, so when I got the audition, I was so excited. And then my first day on set, I thought it was just going to be a one-time thing. And everyone was so welcoming and so nice, and each person just went out of their way to to welcome me and introduce themselves. What makes Bernadette so endearing? Oh, man. <laughs> well, thank you. And <laughs> um, I think the writing, I think they do such a great job of balancing her character and her spunk with her, um, her uh, I guess, endearingness. <laughs> <laughs> Maya, how about Amy? Uh, we're going to discuss more of this in the third segment. Do you see a little of yourself in her? I see a lot of myself in her. Mm -hmm. um, I know not to mix stripes and plaids, but um, other than that, uh, I don't know. I'm, I was kind of a late bloomer socially, and... Um, pretty socially awkward. Um, still? Still, yeah, still. <laughs> You're a mother. Uh, so? I'm a socially awkward mother. My kids are socially <laughs> awkward, too. No, they're not. A little bit. I recently had Zach Levy on the show. He says it's cool nowadays to be a nerd. Do you agree? Um, I definitely think that um, nerds being cool is uh, very much in the zeitgeist now. I think that 
I mean, it's nice that I think smart women are being celebrated, and um, that's an exciting, exciting time to be. A well, how do you explain the incredible fan base of this show? Um, I mean, uh, for well, loyalty, I think, this is incredible. Right. I mean, I think what's interesting uh, um, is that our show. Um, is about the kind of people who watch our show. So we have a bunch of characters who are really interested in uh, in comic books and superhero movies and Dungeons and Dragons and things that a lot of our viewership is interested in as well. So I think you have a real kind of camaraderie. I think people don't necessarily feel like they're watching entertainers or actors. They feel like they're watching people like them. And when Bill Prady and Chuck Lorre created the show, that's exactly what they were trying to do. Bill Prady was trying to show some of the types of personalities that he encountered in sort of his, you know, computer programming days. Um, you know, I went to grad school for neuroscience, and I know people like all of these characters. Those are real people. So I feel like they're they're very approachable that Do way. Do you hear from your fans? Um, yeah. Do you, does yeah. the show get a lot of letters? Do I hear from I, Melissa's fans, which is a funny thing. <laughs> yeah, they do write my, um, they, that's how they get to me, is the... What's the <laughs> set like? Is it a fun set to work? It is. I mean, it's a it's a great group of people. Everyone's extremely hardworking, and there's I think, a lot of seriousness to our set too. Yeah, I think everyone knows that they want to turn out the best possible show that they can every week. So that's the focus. It's a finely there. oiled machine, though. You know, Mark Sandrowski has has directed almost all of our episodes. Mm -hmm. oh, really, um, one director? Yeah, Mark Sandrowski's done most rare. of them. Yeah, and so he. I mean, he really, he knows what he's looking at when he gets a script, and, um, you know, I think for many of us, uh, there's so, there's a lot of changes that happen in the week, but I think you really kind of see us come to life in front of an audience and when we do tape night. Um, but all week, it's sort of like going through, you know, different variations of what we're there for. Chuck Lorre, the co-executive, he has a, a rough, uh, I mean, his, well, let's say his, the theory about him is that he's tough, is he? I think he's a genius and a wonderful, wonderful man. And my experience with him, and I know Mayams as well, is that he's a sweet, loving, caring man. And he... Tight ship? I think, uh, yeah. I mean, I would say if there's things that, you know, I mean, if there's things that Chuck wants done differently, he says it, and we all take that, and everyone sort of knows that's how it works. Um, but I, I, I've had nothing but positive experiences with him and my rule is like he knows what's funny so if he yeah. says to do something different I'm gonna go ahead and do what exactly. Chuck says. Do scripts often surprise you? Um, I think surprise me and when you get the script and you go they ever go wow. Or... <laughs> yeah I mean I laugh out loud when I get the scripts <laughs> and my old apartment had very thin walls and a lot of times my neighbors would comment because I was either like practicing when I do like the Mrs. Wally imitation like mm -hmm. They would hear that, or they would hear me laughing, and I've often been known to cry onto my script sometimes. But yeah, they're, they're you fantastic. You ever break up on set? Yeah, I mean, um, in front of an audience, by then we've usually gotten our giggles kind of out of the way. Um, it's all, I mean, uh, Simon Helberg, who plays uh, Wallowitz, he, he has the ability to make me laugh uh, pretty much any time. Um, when all of us are in a scene together, that's when sometimes trouble starts and we make each other laugh, because it's, it's like playtime for us when we're oh, all together. The audience has to sit there a long time, right? It doesn't shoot quick. They get to sit there a long time. They seem to be having fun. How long does it take to do a show? About five hours? Sometimes Four and a half, half. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are going to break, and when we come back, more with the Big Band Theory stars, Amaya Bialik and Melissa Rouch, when we come back. <laughs> By the way, you were a stand-up comic, right? I was, you still yeah. do any of that? Um, I haven't done it recently, um, but that's how I got my start in New York, and um, I started doing it while I was at college, and um, it was my bread and butter before I moved She's out here. wicked funny. Whenever people say, like, who's the funniest person, funny. she is wicked funny. Nice. Thank you. You like being associated with your character? Um, sure. I mean, I like being associated with um, Jim Parsons. I think he's a comedic genius. And um, Your break was Blossom, though, right? Uh, I was actually in Beaches when I was a little girl. I played the young Bette Midler, and that was sort of what changed my life. But yeah, I did Blossom for five years as a teenager, and then I left and came back. And did you have a show business mother? Um, I guess so. I mean, my parents, my parents are first generation Americans and public school teachers. Um, so I was in school plays and things. I, from I, what country? Um, my great grandpa my grandparents are from uh, Poland, the Czech-Hungary border, um, the Russian-Ukraine border. Any possibility of a Blossom reunion? <laughs> I think Chuck Lorre owns me now, so he'd be <laughs> the one to ask.
I would like that to happen. Melissa, I'm Melissa would put in a request with Chuck. Okay, tell Chuck. Mm -hmm. In the middle of a most successful Hollywood career, you decide to get a PhD in neuroscience. Why? Uh, I fell in love with science in uh, in high school. I was tutored, you know, all through high school when I was working on Blossom, um, and I fell in love with science. I had an amazing female mentor and um, decided that I wanted a regular life. I was never really a typical showbiz kid, so I left the industry for a total of 12 years. I had two kids. They're now five and a half and eight, and I got my degree and um, was teaching and started auditioning kind of randomly. I had never seen The Big Bang Theory and was really? called in to audition for it, yeah. Do you use, does the PhD come in handy on the set? Um, you know, actors are hired to play other people without needing any training in that field. Um, so, no, I don't need to have a PhD in neuroscience to play a neuroscientist. And people always say to me, like, oh, do you tell the cast what everything means? I say, no, no one's really interested <laughs> at all in my she, science she, she must fact check some of the things <laughs> you talk about, though, right? Do you? No. Oh, do you? <laughs> No, a little bit. <laughs> Come on, you know the subject. No, plenty of our writers have science backgrounds or have spouses who have science backgrounds. They definitely do not need me. Dr. David Salzberg is our physics consultant from UCLA. You know anything about physics? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I mean, no. Mm -mm. What is meant quickly by the term neuroscience? Oh, uh, that's the brain and nervous system. And like neurologists. Exactly. A neurologist is an MD. I'm a PhD. You are a proponent of attachment parenting, right? Um, sure, it worked I mean, for us. You breastfeed for a long time. Um, that's actually not part of attachment parenting. I happen to have breastfed for a long time. But attachment what is parent attachment parenting? Attachment parenting is um, usually a broader umbrella term referring to things like natural birth or safely sleeping with your child, breastfeeding, but not necessarily for a long time. Uh, positive discipline, not hitting your children. That's actually one of the main tenets of attachment parenting. But there's not like attachment parenting police that take away your children if you don't what breastfeed them. What attracted you to it? Um, I was studying neuroscience, and I met uh, I met a group of people who were parenting this way. And uh, what really appealed to me is that they didn't yell at their children or give them timeouts or threaten them. And their children um, actually were behaved and nice people to be around. And I was studying uh, I was studying neurodevelopment, and I was studying the hormones of human attachment. And basically, what I was seeing was pretty much reflected in the science. So it made sense to me. But I know it's not. What do you for make of it? What do I make of attachment parenting? Well, based on Mayim's children, who are wonderful, wonderful boys, I think it's fantastic. You're not a parent yet. I'm not a parent. Mm -mm. Nor are you married. I am married. Do you want, do you want to be a parent? Um, eventually, eventually, yeah, I would like to be. What does your husband do? Um, he's a writer. We write together. We're a writing. T we met as uh, in college and became writing partners, and then got together after that. On the breastfeeding aspect, <laughs> yes, uh, that's nothing to do with neuroscience, does it? Uh, sure. It does. I mean, well, si regard? signals signals are delivered to the brain when a child breastfeeds, and that stimulates the mother's body to produce hormones that uh, facilitate human bonding and also allow milk to be released. What <laughs> age do you stop? Uh, whenever is compatible for the mother and the child. Uh, there's nothing wrong with breastfeeding a child older than six months or a year. Um, you can choose when and how you do it, but there are still nutritional and immunological properties to breast milk. Um, my feeling is, you know, if you can still give a bottle, you can breastfeed. That's the way mammals feed their babies. We're, we're no so different than other mammals. You don't breastfeed the eight-year-old? Or the five and a half year old. Oh, Neither, both of them are happily weaned. <laughs> and they actually eat recipes from Mayan they vegan too. They do eat recipes from Mayan vegan too. I want to ask you about <laughs> this. Are you, how long have you been a vegan? Uh, I've been vegan about six years, vegetarian almost 20. What led you to veganism? Um, a lot is of different things. It is veganism, yeah. I actually read Jonathan Safran Foyer's book, uh, Eating Animals. Um, and sort of the premise is, you know, if you're going to pick where to draw the line, it's sometimes easier to erase the line. So I no longer feel guilty or have to wonder where eggs or dairy is coming from. I simply don't eat those things, and I don't so feel guilty you, or wonder. So you do not eat anything? That, anything, that, anything that had a mother. <laughs> anything that had a mother. You I don't eat anything that had a mother. So what do you eat? <laughs> I eat fruits, vegetables, grains, pasta, um, all sorts of salads. And the vegan me. table is recipes, right? It's, yeah, I mean, there's, uh, Dr. Jay Gordon is a pediatric nutritionist and pediatrician, and so he wrote the nutrition stuff with me. But yeah, it's actual recipes that I've had in my family. There's a lot of Jewish recipes that I've made vegan that, you know, I thought I'd never had. Jewish vegan? I'm Jewish, yeah. <laughs> my mother would faint. I know, I make I make all sorts of Jewish recipes. and. Lakshin really. kugel, you don't. Uh, there is, there is a lakshin <laughs> kugel, a, a, milchig, a fake milchig lakshin kugel. I came up with lakshin kugel. <laughs> you just pulled it out of the air. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up with Maya and Melissa will take your questions, but they're not getting this in Louisiana at all. We'll play a game of If You Only Knew when we come back. <laughs> 
Milk and Dick Inflation. <laughs> I called her Maya, and I apologize. It's I, I called you Mayim. Yes. It's Maya. It's I respect you too much to correct you. Why is not M.A. Mayim? It should what? be Mayim. It's Hebrew, water, Mayim. Mayim. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Melissa. Uh, <laughs> you don't get it. This is what I deal with. You should know from it. What's the background of Rauch? Um, it's Austrian, um, German. My father was from Austria. Oh, really? Yes, Jew oh. from Austria. Ah, so was my grandfather. And my mother was from Belarus, Minsk. Mm -hmm. Wow. We have some social media questions for you. Okay. By the way, the book is Vegan Table by Mayim Bialik. Kane Flores on Instagram. Between the two of you, who has a better singing voice? If we've ever, I, we've never, think. we've never had a contest. I think you're I think more trained should. than I am. Uh, I don't know. This mm. one was in. You ever do karaoke or anything like that? <laughs> we, we're gonna go after this. I do not karaoke. I've never done that. No. Like Alan Siriki on Facebook. What's your favorite Amy and Bernadette moment from the show? Mm. I like when we drink together. Yeah, I like the, I like the parking spot episode where we got into it over the parking. Spot. Oh yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I just got to yell at you, so I remember that. Jay Cicero, 88, Instagram, wants to know who's the funniest offset. Uh, Simon. I vote for, well, I, I vote for Simon. I think Melissa's the most surprising funny person. Like, you'll say things that I cannot believe you say, and they're really funny. Well, she's yeah. a stand-up. I know. She's, I said she's wicked. Cody funny. Joe Brown, what are your plans after the show ends? <laughs> oh, man. You'll just be uh, getting Social cry? Security. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. Get Medicare. That would be nice. I don't know. I... I mean, I don't know. Just too far away. Too far away. Yeah, I mean, I, knock on wood. I mean, Melissa's a really talented writer, so I see big things for her. That's very nice. I'll, I'll just June Hanneman on Twitter. How does the cast handle all of the fame that goes with being part of a number one show? Very well. Very well. I think every. It's You're a recognized very in lots group. of play, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, um, I still go. I still go to the supermarket, and I still go places with my kids in a baseball hat, and I'm grateful that I can still do that. Um, you know, I think for, for Jim and for, for Kaylee especially, that's very hard to do. So, um, you know, we kind of all deal with it different ways. What about you, Melissa? I, I'm very awkward when I get recognized and make it awkward for everyone in my surrounding environment. I either talk too long or I am really awkward and make the person feel highly uncomfortable. At Seghammer via Twitter asks, Mayim, what's your number one favorite vegan dish and why? Oh, gosh. Uh, it, it's so hard to pick. I don't know. Um, Do you have a favorite? If there was I, last meal, what would you order? Oh, Good last question. meal? The risotto in there, I'd say. I'd choose. Yeah, there's a vegan risotto in there. That At I Nurse Sparkle on Twitter, who will have Nurse the first Sparkle. Big Bang baby on the show? Wow. Oh, I don't know. Well, I guess this one has already had them. What do you mean? You mean, oh, you like mean on, on the show? show? On the show. <laughs> on the show. Well, I don't know. I mean, Bernadette... It could go, it could go any way, yeah. really. Yeah. you got three females. It okay. could go any way. We play a little game of If You Only Knew. What was your first job? Um, Johnny Rockets waitress. You were a Johnny... I was a Johnny Rockets waitress. Behind the counter with the hamburgers and french fries. Oh, yeah. And, and I did a little singing. What my Johnny kind Rockets? Of wow. The Freehold New Jersey Johnny Rockets. First job. Um, my first acting job, I was in a Stan Winston horror film called mm -hmm. Pumpkinhead. Oh, yeah. I was 11. How old were you? 11, 11 and a half. Wow. First car. Chevy Cavalier. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a Saab stick shift. A Saab. Saab. Interesting. Yep. Most embarrassing moment on the set. Oh, gosh, there's so many. For me, <laughs> um, not you. <laughs> you go. Oh, we had an episode where Sheldon was supposed to spank Amy off camera. It was supposed to be audio only. And in front of the audience, Chuck Lorre decided he would like that to be done on camera. And Jim and I had not at all rehearsed people seeing him spanking me. That was, what was very, it like? It was embarrassing. <laughs> and Worst audition. Oh. oh. <laughs> um, I auditioned for a musical back in New York, and I was doing the Gilda Radner song, uh, Let's Talk Dirty to the Animals. And I froze, and that song is all curse words. So it just sounded like I was spewing curse words as I was trying to catch up to the music. It was it was very uh, very embarrassing. I, yeah, I I cried, and I was a child. I mean, I was twelve. It was a Chips Ahoy audition, and I you were it was two two girls auditioning, and you basically had to just vie for attention for the camera. Oh. I couldn't do it. I just let the other girl get all the camera angle on her, and I started crying. If and that not, girl I... was me. <laughs> <laughs> if not acting, what? Oh, um, maybe um, some sort of a cook, a chef. Not hmm. neuroscience. 
I would, for me, it would probably be neuroscience, or I'd be a stay-at-home mom. Left on a desert island, three things you want to bring. Oh, um, my husband. Um, <laughs> I want to bring your husband, too. That's so funny. He is pretty great. Um, <laughs> and a pad and paper, could that count as one? Yes. Um, and it's not a rule here. I'm not joking. Okay, all right, thank you. And, um, and some fresh water. Um, gosh, it's so cheesy. I'd, I'd bring the Old Testament. I'd bring the Torah. Wow. I'm a person of Jewish Hashem. learning. Thank God, I, I would. Are you, are you practiced? I'm a, yeah, I'm a pretty Jewishy Jewish person, but I just feel like even keep, if... You keep the... Uh, yeah, I keep all those things. But I think also just in terms of something to read, I would want that. Um, I would want my Mont Blanc pen. Um, <laughs> I'd need music. I'd take uh, any Bob Dylan album. <laughs> Proudest moment. Mm. I let you have one. Uh, I think uh, giving birth to my second son, home birth, in in, oh, my, in the living room. Yeah, I did home birth, and I like my first son a lot. But doing it in the house really made me incredibly proud for my second. Um, I would say having my family come to um, a taping of The Big Bang and seeing them huh. really happy. I get all emotional thinking about yeah. that. Do you have a dream co-star? Oh. What actor would you like to work with? Denzel um, Washington for me. Meryl I don't know what project that would be that I would work with Denzel we'll Washington. Next week on Broadway, Raisin in the oh. Sun. Oh. He's doing Raisin in the Sun. Mm -hmm. um, Meryl Streep. Not bad. You both are terrific, and I thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having thank us. You. My thanks to Mayim Bialik. The book is Mayim's Vegan Table. Recipes for the Brave. <laughs> <laughs> Big thanks to Maya Bialik and, and Melissa Rausch. Be sure to tune in to the season seven finale of their show and television's number one comedy, The Big Bang Theory. It airs Thursday, May 15th at 8 p.m. Eastern. Also, don't forget to pick up a copy of Mayim's new cookbook, yeah. Mayim's Vegan Table. As always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. I'll see you next time. <laughs>